Hi, this is Hyman Education, and today we're back to continue solving this chemistry paper. So this question six is about sodium oxide. Um, the first observation is that sodium is a metal atom, and oxygen is a non-metal atom. So metal atoms usually have the tendency to lose electrons and become positive ions. And non-metal have the tendency to gain electrons and become negative ion. Um, and the bond between a metal and a non-metal is the ionic bond, and therefore sodium oxide is an ionic bonding compound. So th this question has three marks. So you'll be awarded um, for each of the mark for saying the change in each atom. So the first mark will write the sodium atom loses one electron because sodium atom is in group one to become um, a positive ion. And then the next mark is for saying that the oxygen atom gains two electrons to become a negative ion because the oxygen atom is in group six. That means it has six um, valence electrons and it needs two more to complete the full um, electron shell. And one more observation about the electronic configuration of two ions is that both will have a 2-8 electronic configuration. Um, so that means the first electron shell has two, the second electron shell has eight electrons. Um, so the two ions is called um, isoelectronic, which means it has the same um, electronic configuration. Okay, so then the next question, they ask to calculate the relative formula mass of sodium oxide using information from the periodic table. Uh, so then we get the atomic mass of sodium is equal to 23, and the atomic mass of oxygen is 16. Uh, so then we have two sodium plus one oxygen equal to 62, and there's no unit because it's relative. Okay, next question, explain why sodium, solid sodium oxide does not conduct electricity. So the ability to conduct electricity relates to the um, ability of either ions or electrons to move. But because sodium oxide is an ionic compound, so it has a giant ionic structure. That means the lattice structure has the ions pack um, next to each other. So then because it's in the solid state, ions cannot move. That means the, electronics, uh, the electricity cannot flow. Um, and they also don't have delocalized electrons. So there's no way that... Um, electricity can flow at all. Uh, okay, so then we move on to the next question. D, um, give a test to show that sodium oxide contains sodium ions. Uh, okay, so usually we think in this chapter, we think immediately about the flame test where um, you burn each of the metal and see the color of the flame um, or each metal will have um, a distinctive color of the flame and sodium uh, ions they creates a yellow or orange yellow flame um, so that's how we know that they contain sodium ions okay next question um, so they asked to complete the equation for this reaction uh, and they give you the product, sodium metal, and the sodium peroxide, um, Na2O2. So the rule to balance equation is that you cannot change the small number. Um, you can only add more uh, of the big number on the left of each compound. So here we just add two um, to the sodium on each side first, and then we count the number of oxygen, and then they balance out and then that's uh, the balancing completes. Okay, this question seven is about soluble and insoluble compounds. And they give you three different test tubes. Um, in tube one, there's copper sulfate and calcium chloride. So if we write the reaction, the equation for this reaction, 
Um, the product will give us calcium sulfate and copper chloride. Uh, so calcium sulfate is uh, an insoluble compound, so it will form the precipitate in the solution. So we'll look at tube 2, where we have magnesium nitrate and potassium sulfate. So most of the nitrate compounds are always soluble. Uh, so when this um, reaction happens, we have potassium nitrate and magnesium sulfate. Uh, so that means that this reaction won't produce any precipitate because both are soluble compounds. And in tube 3, if we write the equation again, we have copper sulfate react with sodium carbonate. The product we'll get is copper carbonate. And most of the carbonate compounds are insoluble, so it will produce precipitate. And the answer in this question will be tube 1 and 3, which is answer C. Okay. Um, and um, as I said, carbonate compounds are always insoluble, but there are some exceptions to this, which are the salt compounds with alkalis or um, ammonium ion. Okay, um, sub-question B. They said that this is the reaction between silver nitrate and sodium chloride, and we have the product is silver chloride. And they asked for the color of the silver chloride precipitate, which is just white. Um, so in the group 7 subtopic, um, we, have the, we have the test for um, halogen ions, which is to combine that with silver ions. And the, each of the precipitate will have a different color. So silver fluoride doesn't produce any precipitate. Silver chloride is the white precipitate. Silver bromide has cream precipitate. And silver iodide is the yellow precipitate. So there's a trend to this color. Okay, next question. Um, the student wants to obtain pure dry crystal of sodium nitrate. And the crystal uh, decompose at temperature above 300 degrees Celsius. Describe a method the student could use to obtain pure dry crystal of sodium nitrate. So we immediately think about um, the description of the crystallization method, um, which is in chapter 1. Okay, so the first step um, from the sodium nitrate solution is we first need to filter out um, some of the impurities from the solution just to make sure that it is pure because in the question they emphasize it's pure and dry crystals. Okay, and then we can proceed to heat up or boil this solution um, until all of the water evaporates um, or most of the water evaporates. Then we can leave this um, mixture uh, to cool down to room temperature so then we can um, so for the crystallization process to uh, happen and then we also pour off this the excess liquid because um, most of the water evaporates some of them still is still left in the mixture um, and then the final step is to just leave um, the crystals to dry or you can use uh, tissue um, or just leave it on the windowsill to dry. Okay, so all right, we'll move on to the next question, which is the last sub question of this question seven. Um, so they asked to give an advantage of mixing solutions containing equal amounts in moles of silver nitrate and sodium chloride. Um, so we immediately think about the ratio in moles between these two compounds um, because they react in the one-to-one -one ratio 
they give you the equation um, to sub question above uh, so then they want to mix in equal amounts to make sure that both of these compounds fully react and we also ensure that the highest possible yield um, happen because you know theoretical yield is different from the actual yield and we also make sure that the products only contained um, silver chloride and there is no other um, excess reactant.